So my GTI has 66,000 miles on it now, and I bought it used, and I'm not 100% sure on what's been serviced and what hasn't been serviced. So in this video, I'm gonna go through everything I can possibly think of and do a complete tune-up. Whoosh, intro. So I teamed up with ecstuning.com and I bought all this stuff on the table that you see here uh, to do a complete maintenance on my GTI. Most of the stuff, I don't even know what it is. We're gonna be doing an oil change. I got a cabin in, cabin air filter, trans fluid. We're doing a brake fluid flush. I'm gonna go through the whole nine yards. In the description below, I'll put a timestamp for each of the services that I'm doing. We're gonna go through the cost of this stuff. I'm gonna go through some tips and tricks on how you can do this on your own car. Uh, some of the stuff I don't even know how to do, so we'll see how it goes. We're gonna learn together, all right? Let's get started. We're gonna start with the oil change. So the plan with this video was to do a complete service maintenance uh, on my GTI and then I was going to share with you guys on how to do each of those services. But if you follow us on Instagram that you know that I've had some engine problems lately and that happened in the middle of this video. So there's going to be a part two maintenance coming out at a later point. So if you do want to skip ahead to some of the services, look in the description below. I'll have the time markers where you can skip ahead a little bit. There is uh, you know, a kind of a spoiler alert, I do have to rebuild the entire engine. So I'm going to be doing um, another video on why I have to do that and then we'll follow that whole process of rebuilding the engine. But, um, so if you guys wanna see those videos, make sure you're subscribed. And if you wanna see some behind the scenes and kind of up-to-date live um, updates, join us on Instagram for all those updates. Sorry, that was disturbing. We are using Liquid Molly 5W40 to change our oil. ECS Tuning has put together these convenient kits so you have everything you need to complete this service. So it saves you money by buying this everything in a kit. And best of all, it ships free. All right, everything you see here for the oil change is $56.47. It comes with all the oil you need. It is six liters of oil. It comes with a new filter here and the new filter ring that you'll need and it comes with a new drain plug. First thing that we gotta do is uh, let the old oil out. So, I'm never very good at this. So this is the oil pan. I know you can upgrade this oil pan because this is a, a plastic. I know they, they have metal ones. But this is the drain plug right here. Um, there is a special tool that you can use to take this drain plug off. But if you have a big, fat, nice uh, flat head like this, it works just fine too. And loosen that baby up. And here we go. You will wanna make sure that your engine is warm before you drain the old oil out of the car, but also not too hot that the oil is gonna burn you. So if you have a cold engine, let it run for two to three minutes, It'll warm it up. Or if it's been running for a while and it's really hot, let it cool down for about 20 minutes. Last time I had like three gallons spill and I had a... <laughs> I'll clean it up. <laughs> you should always drink a beer when you're doing manly stuff like this. Just manly <laughs> All right. While that is draining, um, I'm gonna jump up here and I'm gonna replace this filter. And before you comment in the description down below, yes, I'm using this tool, which is not the right tool. 
but it's all I have. This four post lift is great for lifting the car up and getting great access to perform this service. If you don't have a four post lift, you will need some sort of lift to get access to the drain plug. In the shop, we just ordered the Benpack MD6XP, which is a portable and great option if you have room for it. Or you can pick yourself up a set of race ramps and drive your car right up on them. This is the uh, dipstick. I'm just gonna release that so everything can flow through. I'll loosen this baby up. It's hot. It's hot. You can hear all that oil now coming. I loosened it up. So you, when that drain plug, I've seen another guy do it where he did the filter first and then he put the filter back on and then he did the drain plug. You wanna take that filter off with that drain plug off so everything can flow out. I always put this with the, the writing on there, face down. And you put this down there and it's actually gonna click. Click it in. And then replace this ring here. That down on there. Back on. I'm gonna get it hand tight first. Just give it a little snug. All right, that's done. Now we're gonna put the uh, drain plug back in. Very important, don't forget to put the drain plug back in. Drain plug check. All right, now we're gonna lower the car back down. We're gonna fill this baby back up with oil. Open up the oil plug here. You'll know it's the oil plug because it has an oil can on it. You put this thing here, which doesn't really fit because there's something blocking the hole. Grab the new oil and slowly fill this baby back up. Five liters, we got one more put in. What I really like about buying this kit, you mean you have the six liters that you need, you don't have to worry about putting not enough in or too much in, you got the perfect amount here. VW recommends 5.7 liters, but every time that I've changed my oil, it has taken all six liters. If this is the first time you're doing an oil change on your car, I would just start with the 5.7 liters and then check the dipstick and put more in if needed. All right, we are going to uh, start the engine and let the oil uh, get into the air filter and everything, and then we can uh, check our level. Just start it up, let it filter through the filter, go through. You can also reset the oil service light at this point before you start the car. You can hold down the trip reset button in the center of the instrument gauges and hit the ignition button without turning on the car and it'll prompt you to reset. Just press that trip reset button one more time and it resets itself. And now we can check the level, make sure we're good. Wipe this off. Oh, there we go. Right to the top. Fresh and clean. Fresh and clean. Oil change is done, simple, easy, uh, just like that. What's next? That's it for today. Next, we're gonna change the spark plugs. Uh, I believe these are the original spark plugs still in here. Uh, Volkswagen recommends to change these spark plugs every 60,000 miles if your car's tuned or if you got any performance mods on there. You might wanna do that uh, 
a little sooner. Uh, so we're going to change the spark plugs out. I have NGK performance spark plugs. Put the links in the bottom on the kind that I got here. Let's try to do this. For this service, you will need an ignition coil puller, a spark plug socket, which is just a 5 ace deep socket, and you're going to need a torque wrench to install the new plug. All right, after you have the cover off, you're going to take all these nuts off the ground wires, pull them off, and then we got to take these tabs out. So see these tabs connected to the coil? Those have to come off, and there's a tab here. Okay, all four of them popped off. Just move them out of the way for right now. And uh, we'll take each of these coil packs off. Take your 10 millimeter, I'm gonna remove this long bolt in there. So, uh, side note, my car's been slipping and I'm not sure, this is, I mean, I've, I had another manual when I was like 18 years old, I had a Honda Civic manual car, um, and I haven't had a manual since. I'm having this issue where I'm in sixth gear and I'm on the highway and I'm right at like 65, and then I go to pass somebody and I, I put the gas probably three quarters of the way down. It feels like it's slipping. I can't tell if it's the clutch slipping or if it's the turbo, if it's, and it almost feels like a motor mount too, like there's just a little bit of like a play in the motor or something. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I don't know if anybody else has had that issue, but uh, I'd like to find out what it is. It's happened in third gear a couple times too, where if I'm in, you know, I'm in third gear going 35 and then I just floor it. It just like had just a couple slips, slip, slip, slip. That's what it feels like anyways. Back to the coils. Okay, coil remover. We got a tool, a special tool here. This is a coil puller tool. I'll put a link into the description below. Um, and this, you need this to pull out the coils. I think you can do it without this, but this is gonna make your life a lot easier. This goes into the hole that you just took that long bolt out of and then you're gonna tighten this down and it opens it up. Tighten it down, which way is tighten? Up is tighten. So jam this in the hole, go up here and tighten in that hole and you can pull this up. Pops right out. As you can see, I'm lining up the coils on the cowling here in order, so when I go to put them back in, I can put them back in the exact hole they came out of. Spark plugs exposed, time to change them out. Deposits, nothing crazy. That's what you would look for. If there's deposits? all sorts. There's all sorts of different things you're looking for. If like this whiteness, yeah, you can find it can be black. They can be oily. Um, That's a good I, sign that they're not oily, right? Yeah. Um, you also I don't see a show you a heat ring on here. Sometimes you get a heat ring on here. Really, I'm not an expert on this stuff. Uh, I did go to school, but I also flunked out. That's why I work at Chicago Auto Pros. <laughs> um, no, there's an easy diagram that kind of helps. I mean, literally. Also, stop. Yeah, what am I doing? You should always, um, which one came out first? That, I don't know. I don't know now, this one? I don't know, you did it. Man. <laughs> Why? Well, because if you're trying to actually trade, like, 
you don't have issues, you're just doing it for maintenance. Right. But let's say, let's say you find a problem with one. Okay. You don't know which cylinder it's in now because you on um, this mangle hook. Okay. So if this was your middle and this was number one, then you have three, four, and you do the same with the coils. I did that with the coils, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so I'll just line them up here, one, two, three, four. Yeah, and then you know where they came from, and then if there's an issue with one of them, you know which cylinder. Okay. Your, your, essentially, your spark plugs are telling you what's going on on the inside. Uh-oh. There's oil in this one. That's normal. Is it normal? I mean, how much oil are you talking about? Look at that. Wow. So you can see it right here. Um, essentially, it's it's prob and it looks like it probably is just your uh, how do you call it uh, valve cover gasket. This doesn't have a, fa a valve cover gasket. It has um, silicone. Yeah. Well, okay. Regardless. So is that that's this? That's your this, yeah. This is your valve cover. This is your cam in here. Um, that's your valve cover, uh, but it has O-rings for each of these holes because uh -huh. they need to seal around it. So one of those is weak. Okay. Jimmy's our expert around here. Um, so anytime I need advice on any stuff, I ask him. So it does look, so we look down the cylinders and um, that last one there looks like there's oil in it. And I know that's not good. So, that one looks fine. Let's get out this last one and see what we got going on. Full of oil. That ain't good. What is this on top of it? All right. I don't know what that means, but I know it's not good. All right. Cylinder number four has oil in it. I'm gonna look that up and see what it means. I don't know whether it's a uh, the valve, it's not a gasket, so there's not a gasket in here. It's um, some sort of sealant they put on there. It could be an indicator of a piston, piston rings, could be an O-ring, could be a couple different things, but um, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not gonna try to diagnose it. I'm gonna put everything back together. We're gonna bring it to the Volkswagen dealership, have them look at it. Now, if you don't have oil in your cylinders like I do, this is where you would put the new spark plugs in and you just put everything back together. You're gonna use a torque wrench to tighten these plugs down to 22 foot-pounds of torque. Now you can see on the bottom of this too, there's oil. That's the one that came out of uh, cylinder number four. Hopefully if it's serious, we've caught it before it's anything too serious. Uh, hoping for the best here. It's just something like an O-ring or a gasket or whatever the, the seal around uh, the head here. I'm gonna call the dealership and see if they have a loaner car and then we'll bring it over there. Hi Tina, um, I have a Volkswagen GTI and I was changing the spark plugs and I found some oil in the, um, uh, the spark plug well. And I wanna bring it in and drop it off and see if I can get it diagnosed. And I'm just wondering if you guys have a loaner available. No, that doesn't help me, I can't get home. <laughs> okay, so I gotta find another car. Do I have to have an appointment to come in or can I come in and drop it off? Uh, let me call around then. Thank you, bye. They don't take walk-ins, first appointments on Friday. No loaners either. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna call Adrian. Hello? Adrian, what's up, man? It's Jason. Hey, what's up, dude? I was actually gonna call you tomorrow. This is so weird. 
<laughs> that is weird. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing? Good, man. Good. I'm actually I'm heading back from Crown Rally. We've been driving since yesterday at three. We're driving back from Vegas. Oh wow, man. That's awesome. Good for you. Yeah. I actually got a quick question here. Yeah, what's up? So I was just changing the spark plugs on my GTI, okay. and in cylinder, cylinder number four, I found some oil. Okay. And I hear that's not a good thing. Uh, is it like soaked or just a little bit of oil? It was pretty soaked. It wasn't just a little bit. And I was gonna bring it to the dealership, but the dealership, they don't have a loaner car, and their first appointment is Friday. And I was like, hmm. And then I remember GRD, I know that you're not working anymore. I'm like, maybe I should just give Adrian a call and see what he thinks. <laughs> Can you send me a picture of what it looks like? Um, I could, but I just put it all back together. Oh, that's fine then, don't worry about it. Um, let me, I, I should be home in like three, four hours. Let me call my guy at Volkswagen and see what we can do. Is the car still under warranty or no? Um, I don't know actually. It's got um, just about to pass 70,000 miles, so. I okay, send me send me the VIN of the card. We can check for you. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Yeah. All right. No problem. All right. Bye. It's good to know to know people. <laughs> so I'm gonna send the VIN to uh, Adrian. I guess he knows somebody at Volkswagen. He might be able to take a look at this and figure out what we got going on. So we found out that my car is just out of its warranty. I did find a loaner car for the night and I talked with several people over the next couple days and they confirmed that it's most likely a small leak from the valve cover head, which is actually the cam cover for this car, and that it'd be most likely okay to drive, but to monitor the oil situation. I wasn't losing any oil and it was most likely that this has already been going on for a while. All right. Moving on to something else that we can do um, while we wait for Adrian and figure out what we're gonna do. Uh, with that oil leak, we're gonna change the cabin air filter here. So the cabin air filter, if you get on the passenger side of your vehicle and open the glove box, open it up, and inside here, so there's a couple of uh, tabs here that you'll just want to push up and then it'll release these two that are hooked up in there and then your cabin air filter is back behind here. So we'll take out the old one. Again, there's two tabs right at the top. Pull those two tabs down. And that's your uh, cover there. And then there's an arrow. <laughs> I can already see leaves in it. So we'll pull this baby out. Look at that. Ooh. So you wanna change this every 15 to 30,000 miles. Um, this is gonna keep the air fresh in your car. It's also gonna keep your HVA system working less you know, than it has to. Cause if, you're, if this is all clogged up, it's gonna be hard for your engine to push air through, the, through your vehicle and all the vents. And hence it uh, reduces fuel efficiency. Look at that. Look how dirty that is. Just like that, easy peasy. <laughs> All right, time to do a brake fluid flush. Volkswagen recommends doing a full brake fluid flush every two to three years, and it's simple and easy enough to do it. Um, the brake fluid can get dirty, it can get moisture in there, so it's just a good idea to change it uh, every two to three years. And uh, let me show you how it's done. This is the worst part, is taking off the wheels. This sucks. Proper brake fluid flush ensures that the system is moisture free and will help prevent future rust or clogging issues. This is often an overlooked service, but your braking system is the most important system on your vehicle, so make sure that it's in good working condition. Brake fluid reservoir. This right here, let's take a look in. Fluid's a little yellow, a little dirty. We want that to be pretty much clear. So we're gonna fill that 
to the top because we don't want any air going through the system. Get to the top, put this here cap on it. ECS Tuning has a kit that includes everything you need to perform this brake fluid flush service. The kit includes the Schwaben, Schwaben, whatever, European pressure bleeder and catch bottles, Schwaben bleeder wrench, and one liter of ATE Type 200 brake fluid. And it's going to cost you right around $100. Schwaben, Schwaben, and I'm gonna fill this bad boy up. After you have the cap connected, fill up the pressure bleeder with the provided brake fluid. Like this bad boy, I pump it up to 20 PSI. So we're gonna start bleeding the brakes. We're gonna start on the driver's side front. We'll go to the passenger side front, driver's side rear, and then passenger side rear. You have to go in that order when you're bleeding the brakes. And we're just gonna bleed out the old fluid until we see that new fluid, and then we stop. So we'll connect our bleeder tube here. In the back here, you got a little cap over the, the bleeder valve. Just gonna pull that off and then slip this one on. There we go. Oh, let's slip our wrench on first. Once you got that there, I'm going to loosen the bleeder valve until you see, see it coming out. You're gonna see a transition from the old fluid to the new fluid. It is a little bit hard to get on camera, but as soon as you see that new fluid flowing, you'll wanna close that bleeder valve back up. Dirty. Once you're done with that driver's side front, you're gonna move over to the passenger side front and repeat the same steps. Same with the driver's side rear and the passenger side rear. A little side note about brake fluid, it is a very corrosive fluid and you do not want to get it on any painted surfaces or it will strip that paint off. Release the pressure in the tank and remove the cap. If your brake fluid reservoir is still filled to the top, you can suction some of that fluid out or you can bleed a small amount of that fluid out and get to the proper levels. Thank you for watching and please stay subscribed for part two of this maintenance video. Keep